What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to model a low poly sword in SketchUp. And before we get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I created to give you a start to finish training in SketchUp. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to take your SketchUp training to the next level, make sure you check that out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So really this tutorial comes out of another tutorial that I was watching and it was actually on another rendering program. And sometimes I watch tutorials on other rendering programs because I, I think a lot of people think that those programs can do things that SketchUp can't. And uh, I always like to kind of create models in a similar way and see if SketchUp can do the same things that those programs can. And usually that's the case. And so there's a couple different ways that we could do this. In this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start with a rectangle that's gonna be kind of the base of my sword. All right, and so what we're going to do in this case is we're just going to take our rectangle and we're just going to extrude it up using the push-pull tool. And I realize I'm modeling this way too big. We'll scale it down in a little bit. That's easy to change. Um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to find our point where our sword is going to be, and we're going to figure out about what we want this angle to be on this sword. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and draw this right here. So, and this is all adjustable later too, um, but I'm just gonna draw lines to these two edges. And then I'm gonna push pull this face across to the back side and then click so that it disappears. And then I'm gonna double click over here, do the same thing over here. And so what we have here is we have kind of a rough shape of a sword. And what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm actually gonna use the offset tool on this face to offset this in a little bit. So when I offset this in, what I'm doing is I'm creating this kind of interior, I think the word is channel, I'm not 100% sure, but it's this uh, interior piece right here. And then I'm gonna take this edge and just move it down. And so now we're gonna use an extension called Vertex Tools. And so Vertex Tools is an extension from TomTom. Tom. It is a paid extension, but I don't think it's very expensive. I think it's like, I don't know, $20 or something like that. What it does is it allows you to model in a completely different way in SketchUp. And so the, the way that we usually work in SketchUp is we're modeling using lines and edges. And we don't really do a whole lot with vertices, which is the points where the lines kind of intersect, so the ends of all the lines. Well, what Vertex Tools does is Vertex Tools is a tool designed specifically to let you edit those vertices. So to move those around and that kind of thing. You can see how I can move these up, down, all those different things. Um, but in this case, this has a very valuable tool in here when you activate it called merge vertices. And what that means is that means this will take two of these edges. So if I select the two bottom ones right here, for example, it'll take them and it'll merge them together. And in this case, um, so it's moving those two, it's kind of averaging where they're located and then it's moving them all so they occupy the same space. Well, what that's gonna do is that's gonna take this edge and uh, it's going to make it so that it comes to a point. And so what we wanna do is we wanna come in here and we wanna select each one of these vertices like this. Whoops. You can see how I'm just coming in and selecting the individual vertices. So this, these two, these two, and these two, and just merging them. Well, when we merge them, what that gives us is that gives us a face where this comes to a point. And so what we have is half a sword. Well, the nice thing about half a sword is you can just select it. You can use the move tool in copy mode, and then you can flip it. And I flip it using the scale tool. You can also right click and uh, flip it along an axis. But I use the scale tool just because I can see where it's going. But I'm just going to flip it to negative one and then move it back together. And so when we do that, what that leaves us with is a sword shape. And so the nice thing about this is you can now come in here and you can edit this. So I can triple click and you can use the scale tool to affect how thick or thin it is. And you can see how because all of this is live geometry that's linked together, when you link it together, you can affect the way that this looks really easily. So I'm gonna use the scale tool to make this a little narrower, just like this. And what we have is we now have our sword blade. And so we have our sword blade with very little effort. So, and then the other way you could do this is if you draw a circle with six sides. So if you tap the C key, type in six and hit the inner key, that'll draw a six sided circle. You could draw a six sided circle like this and then scale it together. So you could scale it kind of like this. You could push pull it up and I'm gonna go ahead and explode this edge. 
and then I'm gonna push pull this up and I would push pull it up to about here so that it's about the same size and then I would use the push pull in create new face mode so I would tap the control key and then click and move this up and then I could just select this whole thing and merge it together using vertex tools so if you wanted to create an even simpler sword you could do that using this tool. So there's a few different ways to do this. There's pretty much always different ways to create things like this. And what I like about the way this geometry works is I can move that up and down and adjust the way that my point's gonna look with something like that as well. So you can see how creating something like this is fairly simple. So for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and hide it. That was more of an example. What we wanna do in this case is maybe make it a little bit thinner. It's a little wide right now, so we'll make it a little bit thinner. maybe a bit shorter too. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, first of all, come in here and double click and I'm going to copy this face. And then I'm gonna select all of this and I'm gonna put it in a group for right now. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do an edit paste in place and that's just gonna paste this outside of this group. So now I have my sword in here and it's in its own group. I may actually end up changing that a little bit later, but this ought to be good for what we're trying to do right now. And so what I wanna do in this case is I wanna start off and I wanna start making the, uh, the handle of the sword. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select this face and I'm gonna use the scale tool to scale this out a little bit. And you'll notice that I'm holding the control key in order to do this in uniform scaling mode because what I want is I want this to, um, basically get scaled out uniformly around this center point. And so what I can do now is I can start push pulling this down in order to start creating the handle for my sword. And a lot of what I'm doing in this case is I'm just using the offset tool and I'm just push pulling my shape down. So you can see how I can easily make that I can make that handle get a little bit wider and I can just kind of use this to rough out the shape. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase out this geometry that this is creating down here because I don't want that to be hollow. Um, that just adds a whole bunch of junk in your model that you don't need. And one thing you might think about doing is going into x-ray mode and seeing if you've accidentally created any of that extra geometry. And the nice thing about this is you can erase out that extra geometry without having to hide anything or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle x-ray mode back off. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the actual handle piece. I think this piece is, I'm gonna draw the actual handle piece. And so what I've done is I've set my circle tool to be six sides. So again, just tap the C key, type in six and hit the enter key. And then you can see how your little uh, circle preview becomes a hexagon in here or a six sided uh, circle. So I'm just gonna mouse over this midpoint so that it'll start inferencing. And then I'm gonna hold the shift key to lock along that green axis. And I'm just gonna click right here. What that allows me to do is that allows me to draw this hexagonal shape centered in the middle of this pommel. So once I've done that, What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push pull this down. But again, I'm gonna right click and I'm just gonna explode this curve. And the only reason I'm doing this is because otherwise that was coming in as smoothed geometry, meaning I can't really see the edges and I kinda want to see the edges in this case. So I'm just gonna move this down a ways, probably to about here. And then I'm just gonna select this face. And I'm gonna use the scale tool in uniform scale mode. So I'm gonna hold the control key. That'll put me in scale about center. I'm just gonna scale this in a little bit. And so you can see how when I scale this in, what that does is that gives me that inwardly sloping kind of handle look right here. And so now what I'm gonna do is I actually want a piece on the back side. If you think about the way that uh, sword handles are created, if you ever watch a show like Forged in Fire or something like that, a lot of the time what they do um, is they put this little piece on here that kind of holds everything together. So this piece would go on the end of the wood in order to hold this together. Um, and again, I'm just gonna go into x-ray mode and just erase out this extra geometry in here because I don't need it. So now I've got this base piece right here. And then to tap to cap this off, I'm gonna offset this in a little bit. And you can see how all I'm doing is I'm just using this hexagonal shape to kind of create what I want inside this model. I'm just gonna have this come in here. I'm gonna push pull this down a little bit more. I'm gonna use the scale tool in order to scale this even more. And if I wanted to, I could probably move this 
up. And there's some more complex things we could do in here with like TomTom's vertex tools. Like if we wanted to add detail in here, we could do that. Maybe I'll do another video on something like that. But you can see how this gives us this very simple sword shape. And once you start building on principles like this, what you can do is you can use this to create even more complex shapes. And so one other thing we could do if we wanted to, if we wanted to put a jewel on our handle or something like that, we could still use our hexagonal shape like this. And for some reason, it doesn't want to give me an inference point. So I'm just going to draw a line up. But what we could do in this case is we could just draw a hexagon. Whoops. Like this one. I'm going to go ahead and right click and explode that. And then I'm just going to push pull it out. Use uniform scaling to scale it in. And then if you wanted to, you could do that again. I actually kind of like the way that that looked, but we'll see how this looks as well. So you could scale this piece in as well. And then I'm just going to move the whole thing back in here. And in fact, I think it would probably be even better if I just select it and then just use the scale tool to scale it back like this. So and honestly, I actually liked it better the way that it was. So just very simple, kind of like this. So we'll scale this in just a bit more. And there we go. We're ready to start texturing. And if you wanted to, you could select this, make a copy using the Move tool, flip it, and then move it back like this. And again, you can adjust this using the scale tool if you don't want this to be quite so far out. Or you don't even really need the scale tool. You can just select this face and move this. There we go. You could just move this in and out. So now we could come in and start adding textures if we wanted to. So, and uh, I mean, that's, that's all gonna be kind of a preference thing in this case. So you could just come in and start adding like a, uh, like kind of a goldish color to your sword hilt. So, so the other thing that might be a good idea when you're doing this is you may want to group your jewel as you're drawing this in here. Um, just so that now you can come in and you can select everything else in here and deselect the jewels, um, just because it's a little easier and faster to add colors that way. So you can see how I can add these in here really easily. If you group this geometry when you're doing this, it might get even easier. But um, in this case, we'll just go ahead and add this real quick. All right, and then the last thing we could do is we could make this a group and scale it down so that the size makes a little bit more sense. And there you go, simple low poly sword. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Do you like this kind of modeling? Do you like the vertex editing? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.